Guys, we need to talk about the state of PC gaming. The last few major hardware releases from Nvidia, AMD and Intel have left me disappointed, disenfranchised and frankly a little bit upset. But where does this leave the average PC gamer who just wants to build a great system with great hardware for playing their favourite titles? Let's dive into it. This video comes off the back of a number of disappointing launches, most recently Intel's 14th gen lineup. Intel 14th gen is essentially a refresh if you can call it that, of the 13th generation chips that adds a bit more clock speed to the i9, couple more cores to the i7, and basically doesn't do much else. Disappointing considering how good and how well reviewed 13th gen was, not only by us, but other media and publications too. What's more, the new 14th gen chips run pretty hot. We can get the 14900K to boost up to its highest end clock speed, even with a 360 mil in push pull, a 420 mil cooler in push pull, it just wasn't having any of it. Something which really hampered the performance we were able to get out of this chip. What's more, don't even get me started on Intel's press deck in which they proclaim the i9-14900K to be the fastest gaming CPU in the world. How did they come to that quite grandiose statement? Because it's the first desktop gaming chip to have an out-of-the-box boost clock speed of 6 GHz. Strictly not untrue that it's the fastest if clock speed's the measure we're going to use, but it doesn't exactly translate into frame rate, otherwise all of our benchmarks would be based on CPU clock speed alone. And in truth, I don't really know why 14th gen exists, other than the fact that people are likely to buy the thing with the highest number. 14900K certainly sounds better than 13900K. But Intel aren't alone here. To my left, I've got an RTX 4060 Ti and an RTX 4060. Now these particular cards are two GPUs you will never have seen featured in a build on the channel because you frankly shouldn't buy either of them. Intel's 4060 was an unmitigated disaster and you only have to watch our review video in which I basically said this is the worst graphics card I've ever tested, don't buy it, or read our RTX 4060 Ti review on geekart.com where I said something along the similar lines. I think actually with the 4060 Ti, rasterization and ray tracing were okay, but 8 gigabytes of VRAM was frankly pathetic and the memory bus, which constrained bandwidth beyond belief, was so disappointing it made me want to cry. But don't worry, Nvidia have got a 16 gigabyte version now available for the same price as an RX 7700 XT or thereabouts. Now, now thankfully, now thankfully, never mind, not going to be used again. The AMD track record has been on the whole a little bit better. RX 7000 series has been fairly drama free. Other than the RX 7600, which aims to compete with the 4060, a card which had similar VRAM limitations, a last minute pre-embargo price drop, and a similarly lukewarm reception. If you ask me, I think the 7600 didn't quite deserve all of the bad rap that it got. It's a very capable card if you're only constrained to 1080p gaming. But I do agree that it's a step backwards over the last generation cards, given those VRAM constraints. And what's more, things don't get any better if you're a budget gamer either. Rumours of the RTX 4050 unsurprisingly haven't materialised to date, and if I'm being honest with you, I'm not expecting AMD or Nvidia to want to compete in the budget GPU segment of the market again anytime soon. Just look at how much money Nvidia are making selling AI GPUs to TikTok and ByteDance and ChatGPT. And you'll see why Nvidia's interests are probably placed elsewhere. I mean, you can hardly blame them when their revenue, operating margin, net profit, and share price are all at record levels that even Nvidia hasn't seen before. Now is quite a good time to be an Nvidia shareholder. Maybe that's why I'm angry, because I'm not an Nvidia shareholder. Anyway, James, you're just complaining about things. Is there any good news in the PC hardware industry? Yes, there is. DDR5 memory is very cheap and not very good. AMD's AM5 CPUs seem to be going from strength to strength. You can very commonly find a Ryzen 5 7600 non X for around the $200 mark, sometimes even below, which is kind of crazy. And the X3D chips from AMD have also gone on and been a bit of a storm, really, within the market, and naturally had the positive reception that we'd hoped they might see after the launch of their previously successful 5800X3D and associated releases. What's more, motherboards have also come down quite a lot on the AMD side of the equation, making an X670 or B650 board cheaper than ever. Talking of cheap, M.2 SSDs, very affordable nowadays, so there are certainly things heading in the right direction. But actually, the bigger point I'm making here is around my disappointment for not just the budget end of the market, but the mid-range of the market too. We all know that new generations of hardware mean that the maximum performance capability, theoretically, increases gen on gen, aka a 4090 on the Ada Lovelace architecture will always deliver more than a GPU on the previous Ampere architecture was 
able to do. But the one thing that generational jumps in performance also enable is for far better value cards, CPUs, and components at the lower end of the market. And what that means is that consumers shopping on a bit of a budget should be able to buy a better 60 tier GPU than ever before, as the higher end performance from the last generation begins to trickle down to cheaper cards. And that's something that we simply aren't mm. seeing. Who do Intel think is going to buy the new 14600K with its $319 MSRP, when really it's no better than a Ryzen 5 7600X, which costs about 220 But this whole palaver with PC hardware right now also leaves me kind of confused as to what retailers are going to do. Because of course these brands want to sell their next gen products. And maybe, just maybe, people always want to buy the thing with the highest number. To be clear, 14th gen CPUs aren't bad, I just don't like what Intel have done in releasing a new generation that isn't really that new at all. And people do vote with their wallets. I bet if you look at the 4060 sales, like for like, over the last gen 3060, or more realistically, the 2060 that came before it, you'll see more people avoiding NVIDIA's entry-level card than in the past. Look at how much money AMD have probably made with the 6700 XT and 6750 XT, two of the cards that are regarded as being probably the only good value, high performance and high potential cards currently available on the market. So I guess I'm using this video a little bit to say, A, I'm disappointed, but also B, that you as a consumer should be really careful right now as to what hardware you choose to buy or not to buy. A $500 GPU on one side can perform incredibly differently to a $500 GPU on the other side. With the disparity between hardware on a vendor by vendor or even model by model basis greater than ever, the 4060 Ti sounds like it performs quite similarly to the 4070, but it doesn't. The 4070 is a way better buy than the 60 Ti, and that's the kind of caution you need to exercise in the current market. To close this out, what do I actually want to see from hardware, vendors, brands, NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel? I acknowledge and appreciate that we can't have gigantic leaps in hardware and processing power all the time, but NVIDIA are leaning too heavily on their AI-backed features like DLSS3, rather than delivering the straight rasterization gains that the new architectures can genuinely deliver consumers in all budget brackets. But what should Intel have done rather than releasing 14th gen? To me, this feels more like a 13th gen plus, and maybe that would have been a better way to pitch it to consumers, perhaps even with some competitive price drops that look to make that architecture a better value option for people all across the market. To be clear, I'm not expecting Intel to give away, or any brand to give away their CPUs, GPUs, motherboards, cases, or power supplies. And maybe I'm getting a little bit too caught up in naming and semantics, but 14th gen doesn't really feel like a new gen generation at all. AMD are gladly much closer aligned to where I think consumers want them to be, but even they have still made mistakes this year with the likes of the 7600, a card which could have been so much more with just a couple of gigabytes more VRAM, and the 7700 XT, a GPU that delivers decent value but kind of sits in no man's land. Even in the current climate, where people perhaps don't want to spend the kind of money they might have done in years gone by, I don't believe there is no appetite of people who want to buy hardware. People just want to buy good value, not cheap, good value hardware that delivers nice generational performance gains at a price that doesn't feel like extortion. What do you guys think of the current PC hardware market? It certainly makes producing builds on the channel kind of hard right now because there's just too much stuff that if I was spending my own money, I simply wouldn't buy. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it insightful, I'm not sure it was particularly enjoyable for anybody, maybe get subscribed. And um, yeah, I don't really know what to say. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.